Last week I had this really interesting Facebook exchange with two guys who are actually priests in the Greek Orthodox Church, which was kind of cool for me because I don't often get to talk to actual clergymen. Um, it was on the comment thread of my video, What Can an Atheist Tell a Child with a Dead Dog? And one of them is a friend of a friend on Facebook, uh, Father Barnabas Powell. He was a really cool guy. And then a friend of his and fellow Greek Orthodox priest, Father Athanasios Haros, uh, chimed in. And he sent me a link to an article that he wrote about three years ago on his blog, uh, Be Transfigured. And there's a link to it in the description bar. Um, where he compares the uh, evidence for George Washington to the evidence for Jesus and argues that if you accept the existence and the details about the life of George Washington from historical records and so forth, then you must also accept the biblical claims about the life of Jesus. And I read over his article and I, I looked at his claims and I it's one of those times where you feel like something has just fallen into your lap and you're so so happy I I, I I was so happy that he showed me this because uh, he thought it was he thought of it as evidence for his position but actually I think it's a great argument for the atheist position um, so follow the link in the description box if you want and, and read his original article and I'm going to talk about his main points and why I think that the George Washington versus Jesus argument actually comes out way in favor of the atheist position, not of the Christian position. First of all, let's look at the evidence. Let's compare the evidence for George Washington and the evidence for Jesus. The evidence for George Washington, not only that he existed, but that he was who history says he is, that he was the, the the general, the commanding general of the Continental Army, and he was the first president of the United States, and he was a lived on a Virginia plantation, etc., etc. That evidence is voluminous and it is wide-ranging from a plethora of sources um, and different types. We have letters, we have contemporary newspaper reports, we have uh, records, and we have descriptions of Washington from his friends, from his enemies, from objective sources. So it allows historians to come up with a three-dimensional picture of who Washington was or probably was. Um, the evidence for Jesus, on the other hand, is secondhand at best. Now in his blog article, uh, Father Harris claims that the Gospels were written by eyewitnesses to the life of Jesus. That is probably not true. Um, the four Gospels were probably not written by people named Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John who were apostles of Jesus. They may be based on the stories that those four men were known to have been telling as they evangelized, but they were not written down by those men. And, uh, and I say secondhand at best because the stories were probably told for many, many years, many decades before they were finally written down and then those first written forms were passed from hand to hand and edited and translated and details were changed and bits were subtracted and added and and, and this is not really the subject of a very vigorous debate these things are reasonably well accepted and agreed upon in the, the biblical scholarship community um, the serious biblical scholarship community and the, the oldest parts of the New Testament we know with a fair amount of certainty are the Pauline epistles, which were written by Paul, who he, by his own claim never knew or met Jesus. So the evidence for Jesus is not really comparable to the evidence for George Washington. So that's number one. Next we have the nature of the claims made about the life of George Washington. Now, George Washington had a remarkable life. He was the commanding general of the Continental Army. He won the Revolutionary War, which got America its independence from Great Britain. He was the first president of the United States. Uh, he was the, the figure that looms the largest in the history of the United States. He had a, an amazing life. But nothing about George Washington's life strains credulity. All of it could have happened. There's nothing to, to, to raise any red flags in our minds to think, wait a minute, 
That can't possibly be true. Jesus, on the other hand, is the subject of numerous claims that are utterly fantastic and extraordinary. Uh, he's said to have healed the sick. He's said to have worked miracles, to have raised the dead, to have returned from his own death. And, and claims this extraordinary require extraordinary evidence. And there just isn't the evidence for these incredible things that under normal circumstances would be considered impossible, or at least so improbable as to be impossible, that there's, there'd be no reason to believe them. And the only real evidence for these claims of the miraculous and the divine surrounding Jesus are found in the Bible. And the Bible, the New Testament tells us that the life of Jesus was the fulfillment of prophecies in the Old Testament. And in the Old Testament, there are many stories like the divine creation, the, the Garden of Eden story, uh, the story of the, the flood of Noah, the, the Moses narrative, which includes not only miracles performed by Moses, but also uh, an account of the Israelites being enslaved by the Egyptians and then wandering in the desert for 40 years. Things which are almost certainly not true, just never happened. And there's pretty broad agreement that those things never happened. So you're telling people based on evidence in a book full of stories that we know never happened, that these other extraordinary things happened. And there, there's just, based on that evidence and based on the nature of those claims, there's just no reason to believe the things that are said about Jesus in the New Testament. Whereas the claims made about George Washington, for the most part, are are easy to believe, given the evidence available for them. Um, and, and finally, uh, one of the big arguments in favor, made in favor of the Jesus narrative, is that, well, people saw these things happen. You know, if, if, if Jesus didn't really do the things that he is said to have done, then people who knew better would have spoken up, and these legends would never have survived. Look at the folklore that has sprung up around the life of George Washington, just in the 200 some odd years since his life ended. Um, there are so many myths about George Washington, so much folklore, like the fact that uh, the belief that he had wooden teeth, or the story about him chopping down a cherry tree and then responding to his father when confronted about it, I cannot tell a lie, or the, the feat of throwing a silver dollar over the Potomac River. These are things that, that a lot of people who don't know any better still believe about George Washington. They take them as just other aspects of his actual historical life. And none of them are true. He didn't have wooden teeth. He never threw a silver dollar over the Potomac River. The story about the cherry tree and I cannot tell a lie is folklore. It never happened. Or at least there's no reason to believe that it happened. And if stories like that can be built up around the life of George Washington, who we know with as much certainty as we probably can know was a real historical figure. And we understand a great deal about his life and we know a great deal about who he was and what he did. Is it really so hard to believe that some folklore, some mythology, some fantastic claims would be created and survive to this day surrounding the life of Jesus, who lived in a time that was much, much more ignorant and superstitious than that of Washington, with far less of an ability to, to record and preserve the true details of his life. I mean, if, if people still believe that George Washington, the first president of the United States, threw a silver dollar over the Potomac River or, or had wooden teeth, or, or chopped down a cherry tree and said to his father, I cannot tell a lie. Why is it so hard to believe that the miraculous stories of Jesus are similarly folklore? Why is it so hard to believe that, yeah, when you read in the Bible about Jesus healing the sick or raising the dead or coming back from the dead himself, that those stories, just like the folklore surrounding Washington, were just made up at some point. They're just additions to the facts. I don't think that it's that much of a stretch, and more than that, I think it's the most reasonable explanation.